what is it? It's early. It's only like, what, 11.30 in the morning or in the evening. This is, why are we not focusing? Hello? There we go. Press the button for autofocus. Yay! This is Richard's 10 pill. Now, if you guys go back and you look in my videos, and we're gonna look back about six months ago, maybe seven months ago, um, Richard sent me this X-Force, and it was screwed up from the day one. It had DEIs in it, and we put uh, Toshiba's in it, which was a match set of red dots at that time. And we did a full blown, full mod, full money to it. Now we shipped this back to Richard and what happened is UPS decided they were gonna give it an ass rate. And then they lost it. And what do I mean by that is, well, they dropped it, they bent the whole side of the cabinet in, they hit it so hard that the transformers weren't sitting square and the floor got all bent up, and they broke some stuff inside the box. Well in the process of doing the insurance claim and getting it returned back to here, it got lost, like disappeared in their system. And Richard calls me and says, man, I sent you the amp. I'm like, sweet, I'll be looking for it. And like two months go by and I call him and say, hey man, your amp showed up here. He's like, you're kidding me. I'm like, no, dude, because it's been two months. And I'm like, I did, it's, it just got here. <laughs> well, that was a month and a half ago and I'm just now getting to where I can start doing repairs again, so. You guys have noticed I've been banging them out like they're going out of style. Anywho, one of the things that happened when it got dropped was uh, this capacitor got ripped off the board for some oddball reason. And uh, so Richard gets it and he gets it all hooked up and gets it wired over 220 on his 220 plug, his dryer plug. And he goes and fires down and he goes, man, this thing ain't putting out the watts. Ain't putting out the watts. It's not putting out the watts. And now we know why. We had one two-pill section that wasn't turning on. So of course, it popped one transistor here, 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 and here. That section, fine. Of course, the rectifier ring got all burned up. So it showed back up here. Oh, and every single switch on the front of this thing was broken. Now, this single pull double throw switch for the sideband delay, and that's all it is, is it adds a little cap to it over here. This holds a relay shut for a little bit longer. This thing's bias class, so you don't run it in sideband. He knows that, and I'm putting that out there. Just because it says SSB on the front does not mean the box is capable of doing sideband. <laughs> Be aware of that. The X-Force, they use a knockdown resistor setup just like I do. And uh, just pretty much like everybody else does that puts any bias on the input transformer unless you're going to do a voltage regulator, I think. Um, uh, what the gatekeeper does a little bit different system. His is closer to like Fat Boys, which is a regulator, a diode, and resistor, and then they split it off. And I like to do separate knockdown resistors and works better to me in my mind, but no, neither here nor there. Needless to say, verify before you operate on side banks. You're in the sucker in class C, it'll last for a minute, but only for a minute. And yeah, Richard, I went in and I um, burnt, replaced all the burned up resistors and replaced that smoke. And then went to working on what was wrong with it after I got the cabinet all beat back out square again for you. So there's this one little blemish and uh, I beat the lid back out so it's square, beat all these body panels to their square and knocked the floor back up so it's solid and retuned it a little bit. Better than that, put four new transistors in it and the thing hopped right back to life. So, picking up the wreckage of UPS. This is truly all UPS's fault, it really is. So, with that being said, we're gonna operate with the uh, 1000 watt slug in 5x position, so it's reading like a 5000 watt slug in PEP. We're gonna operate with a 1000 watt slug, and then of course, when we get on in the video, we're gonna have to jump up to the 5kW slug to show bird average. And a 5 watt slug back and reflect from the bird 10,000 watt dummy load. We're gonna use the Connex uh, 4400, and then we're gonna use the Striker 955, hitting the two pill SRF 3662, two pill which we're gonna kick about 350, 400 watts of drive into this puppy, so. With that being said, 
sideband delay preamp off, turn this puppy on. Like I said, all these switches were busted, so we can get up in here with the light. Those are all brand new switches. switches. Now the one in the middle, the one in the middle is a single pull, double throw, switch. Which I thought I had about 500 of these because I can remember I bought a huge bulk lot of them. Can't find them. So my ass today went on a hunt for this switch. I live in a town with 300,000 people in it. There's two radio shacks left open. Both on the complete opposite sides of town for me. So <clears throat> I went and got this switch. Now I pay about a dollar and four or a dollar and five cents a switch for these. When I buy them in bulk, right? I'm here to tell you Radio Shack now charges $5.99 for that little switch. <laughs> I guess I live in a world where I should consider myself lucky that a cell phone store actually carries switches. The reason I brought that up is because it took up a large portion of my day. It took uh, an hour and a half to go get one switch. Unless to say I am going to find my box of switches out here someplace. It's around here someplace. It's in this cardboard city I call my office. Anywho, all right, enough babbling. Let's get on with it. So first things first, we're going to grab the microphone for the codex, and I'm going to show you how much drive we're putting into it. Remember, so it actually even show up on the scale. Go back to 1x. Connex on 14 volts. Oh, about 110, 115 watts of power. Back down to 5x. Let's put the amp into operate mode. So you're seeing about 800 bird and about 2400 watts peak. So now let's look at the input tune. That's the 2950, the Connex, 955. Five watt slug in reverse from the radio to the meter to the amp. Meter in reverse, so we're looking at the reflected wattage coming back. This is scary. This it really should scare you. Believe it or not, we're keyed right now. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. This is our reflected power from our 10,000 watt dummy load. This is a five watt slug. So, <clears throat> if we set this up in an ideal world, you're going to see about a watt to about three-fourths of a watt of reflect for every 1,000 watts produced. Okay? This is a 1,000-watt slug and bird. So we're getting all the way over here to this mark, which is 800, because it's a 1,000-watt slug, so we're reading the bottom scale, adding one, so we're getting over here to 8. And this is a 5,000, so the 10, the 20, the 30, the 40, the 50 is what we're reading, but you got to add two zeros, right? So we're coming out here in about in the middle. We're showing the progression. Just showing progression. So we're going to shut the Connex off now that we've demonstrated that we have an unbelievably righteous input tune, which is dead flat, and that it's putting out power. Okay. With about 120 watts of drive. We're going to step that up a little bit. Now, I used to just lay these cables on the bench until you make the mistake of actually hooking one into another and they're not supposed to go in that sequence. So now I hook them up and I flip them off the board. I don't even want them on the bench. All right, so now we're gonna jump over to the 955. Turn the Connex off, turn the 955 on. And because we're gonna bury the crap out of that 1,000 watt slug, switch over to the 5KW for the slug there. Once again, it's 5KW in average, 5KW in peak. So we're going to read this the same. The 10's 1,000, 20's 2,000, 3,000. I bet you we end up somewhere in this area, right here. I see about 13, some change out of it. So let's hit it with the 955 real quick. Hello, audio. Hello. Audio. About 500 bird and 2,000 peak. Oh. 
Seen about 13, 12 to 13 bird, and we're seeing over here about 3,200 PEP. Hello, are you? Hello, are you? Which is about what we're going to get. Pretty simple, straightforward. Now, I don't want to key it a whole lot more than that because there's no airflow. And when it was here last time, we did the modifications to it. Now, I don't know if you guys can remember what's hot in the time machine. We'll jump back about a hundred and something videos ago where I explained that the older X-Forces like this, they have these vents that are on the, back of the, on the back of the deck. One here, one here, and one here. And they had the under portion of the board open. Well, this cabinet's got six high flow fans on it, right? Air is like water in the sense that it will always take the path of least resistance. Okay? So if you're going to pressurize the cabinet, why not make it so that all of your parts have to have airflow come down across them and then exhaust out across your heat sink? It makes the cabinet quieter to let the air pressure out because then the fans aren't having to fight the back pressure. But what I found that actually made these boxes last more than a minute was to force the air across the heat sink. They'd have all these slots open, okay? And the air would just kind of slowly piddle across the transistors and out. And it, most of it was flying out these other two vents that didn't have any obstructions in front of them, right? Well, I pointed that out. I have noticed since I've got another one of them sitting right over here on the floor, and that's a more updated version, that they have gone and since modified that. They've either got a piece of phenolic in there. Um, his newer stuff has got different fan grills which restrict the airflow but keep big particulate out of the inside of the box, which I think is a great design, but they've changed the venting and um, they've changed the, the path of air on it. I wonder where they got the idea. I don't know. I'm not saying. I'm not taking no credit. But that's already been done. The other thing that we did on the last one is that we added a thermal couple to it, this right here. So if the box gets over 160 degrees, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, you got to remember this was seven months ago and about 400 amps ago. Um, the box gets over 160 degrees, it just cuts the key and relay off completely. Amp won't key until the box cools off, thermal couple will re-solidify and cool. A little metal element inside of it will reclose and we'll have the key and relay to operate again. Under that, man, you're good to go. Richard, I appreciate you sending this back over here. I am going to have them triple box this son of a bitch, and uh, we're going to insure it for, well, the moon. And if they destroy this thing, we're going to get the insurance claim and we're going to go build you an LD MOS box because these big old iron core transformer power supplies, they were the shit in the day. We've discovered better technology. All of this jazz that's going on in here, all of these parts, we can now replace with two MOSFET devices. Unlimited key down time, don't have to worry if the antenna's there or not, and you can pick it up with one finger come a long ways but this is still a very good amp very very good amp and uh, if we can get it through the shipping process to get it home I have a feeling that this is gonna last you a long time Richard I appreciate you guys oh um, I did have a couple of my friends complain to me that they got tired of listening to the air conditioning boot running in the background I did a bunch of noise canceling stuff on that in the last two days so I don't know if you guys can tell or not, it's picking up more of my voice than it is that. I hope that that helps satisfy that. Anyhow, moving on. I appreciate you guys. My name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Come check us out, www.bbiamps.com. You can find us Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. I am all over social media. At the end of the day, none of that means shit. I say thanks, guys. I really do. On to the next project. One more dude, 10 8 and straight. See you, gentlemen. Bye.